welcome to the Getting to Know Alexi video series brought to you by the Alexi Consortium. Today's video, The Rise of Smart Devices and the Cloud, is presented by Neil Forcier, Application Engineer with Agilent Technologies. My name is Neil Forsam, I'm Application Engineer with Agilent Technologies, and I'm talking to you from uh, Loveland, Colorado. Okay, so let me get started. Uh, the rise of smart devices in the cloud. So once again, smart devices, uh, you know, I'm talking about, you know, your smartphone, your tablet PC, and, and these are devices that um, everybody has today, everybody's carrying around. And the idea is there's different ways we can use them to actually control an instrument or to get data or to monitor a test system, change a setting on a test system. The, the first way and sort of the, the simplest way is to take a, a device once again like, a, like an iPad. Uh, if we have a VPN on it and we have a test system that is connected to the, in, to the Internet or to the company's net, network, we can use a VPN. We can use also they have apps for remote control of a PC. We can then log into that PC and control that test system. Or we can log into the network and connect to that instrument. Now, another thing we could do is um, we can use a smart device or uh, yeah, a smart device to actually control that instrument or to control uh, a data acquisition instrument or, or whatever. And the idea is, is smart devices have access to, you know, once again, the cellular network and Wi-Fi networks. And, once the, and the cellular networks and Wi-Fi access points are connected to what? Connected to the Internet, connected to the Internet, which is based on Ethernet. So we can actually write apps or, or make apps uh, that actually can control instruments. Now, how do we do that? Well, today, um, mainly what's available is we have to use the socket programming API for whatever smart device we want to use, whether it be Apple's iOS or Google's Android or a number of the other ones. Also, since with smart devices, we can't always guarantee that the device is connected to the instrument. Your connection is not always guaranteed. Uh, smart devices for direct instrument control make more sense for data acquisition instruments or instruments that, that run on their own, uh, where we just need to poke in on them to start a test or to monitor a test or to stop a test or to change a setting. Uh, you can see up there, we do have a, a, a fairly simple app out there for one of Agilent's data acquisition instruments. It's free to download if you ever wanted to play around with it. Uh, the web address is there, but you could just search 34972A DAC, uh, DAQ app in a search engine, it'll show up. Um, here I talk about uh, some of the advantages and, and the disadvantages. Now. Once again, we can use a VPN, we can use remote access of a PC. We could actually use a service like um, NI's LabVIEW, where it has a web publishing uh, feature in LabVIEW that allows it to, anything that can connect to the web can grab that data. So that's another way we could use a smart device. Um, once again, we can program a smart device to connect to an instrument, but one of the downfalls of that today is there's not the tools out there that there is for the PC. For the PC, if we want to make a test and measurement software, there's tons of drivers, there's tons of UI tools such as plotting tools. Uh, today, there's only a few tools available. Uh, at Agent, we've actually made it free for customers sort of as an experiment where we created I.O. tools, I.O. code, and I.O. classes that abstract the whole socket programming experience and abstract the, the low-level data handling for you. Uh, we've also, and we've done this for both the I.O.S. and for Android. Uh, so the idea is if you go to the website shown on the slide, 
we have these tools up there. You can download them. You can drop them into, uh, you know, your Android development environment, which is Eclipse, or your iOS development environment, which is Xcode. And all of a sudden, you skip the part of doing the network programming to communicate with your instruments. These I.O. tools essentially create like a visa-like layer where you're just doing a connection to an address, specifying the port. You know, you're, you're printing a command or you're doing a query and then you're reading back the data from the instrument and then you're closing the connection. A uh, very simple interface and the idea is to, to abstract the, uh, all the low level IO details for you. And then also for Android, we have plotting tools where, uh, we allow an easy interface for displaying data on a smart device such as a tablet, PC, or a smartphone. Okay, let me talk a little bit about using the cloud for test. Uh, so what is the cloud? The cloud typically refers to, you know, a web type service uh, where we have memory we can access uh, from anywhere from the cloud, you know, any type of internet connection. Uh, you know, it talks about processor power we can leverage uh, from the cloud. And a lot of times for cloud computing, these, these things are dynamic, meaning we can use more processing power as needed and we can use more memory as needed, uh, and all of that is transparent to us. It's dynamically handled by whatever cloud service we're using. Uh, what does this mean for test and measurement? Well, on the grand scale, you could have uh, some central company location running server software that's controlling test systems you know, in Malaysia, in, in the U.S., and in Canada. Uh, you know, that's something that is possible today. It's, it's not something that is, that I've seen at this point. Uh, but there is some lower level or easier stuff we can do by using the cloud to use the cloud to access data remotely. Uh, I talk about some of the examples of cloud tools. You heard me mention LabVIEW's web services. I'm going to talk about an example next where I set up a test where I use Dropbox to actually access data from a test running inside my company's firewall and actually be able to change settings on a test from anywhere, from the airport on my iPad or from my computer at a cafe. So here's a slide and we're just going to see some pictures. I, I did a simple, what I'll call more of a data acquisition test using Agilence 34972A. Um, LXI instrument, uh, it can run scans, uh, so on and so forth, make measurements, you know, temperature, voltage, whatever. It also has some triggering controls. So what I did here is I took a uh, programming language V and I wrote up a simple test software. Once again, I used V, but you know, you can use any popular language. And the idea is I had 34972. I had a computer controlling it and collecting the data. And my test system program controlled the instrument, it collected the data, it then used a uh, spreadsheet or an Excel API to send the data to an Excel spreadsheet. Now that Excel spreadsheet was stored on my computer in my Dropbox folder. Now for those of you not familiar with Dropbox, it's a cloud service where you sign up, and if you're only using a certain amount of memory, it's free. If you want to use a lot of memory, it's, it's a, a monthly cost. And the idea with Dropbox is you have a folder on your PC, just like your My Documents folder on your Windows PC or anything, and it's a Dropbox folder. And so whenever you put a new file in that Dropbox folder, the Dropbox folder program automatically writes it to your Dropbox storage in the cloud. Now, if you have a Dropbox account and you have a PC at home and you have a, a, let's say, a tablet or you have a friend that has a PC and you're sharing data with them, if they have that same Dropbox account, anything you write to the cloud, once you log on to that other device, will automatically be written on the Dropbox folder on that device. So it's, it's, like, a virtual me it's like a virtual USB memory stick that's backed up by the cloud. So back to the test. I was logging data into an Excel spreadsheet that was being stored in my Dropbox folder. 
once again, this is inside my company's firewall. Then Dropbox writes that those my Excel spreadsheet to my Dropbox folder in the cloud. Now all of a sudden I can access that Dropbox folder and that data from anywhere across the globe. And anybody who has a password into my Dropbox folder can now access that test data. Also, you can set it up so that that data file or that measurement report can be accessed using a link. And anybody you send that link to can access that document, even if they don't know your password. And I actually put a link on the slide for the example test report I made. Uh, once again, it's a long address, but if you type it in, it will automatically download that uh, Excel spreadsheet. So once again, we set up a way where we can have a protective test system, a protected test system that can share its test report data into the cloud securely from, for almost anybody to access that we want to access it. Uh, you then can take it another step forward. So what I did is, uh, I don't know how well you can see this in the slide, but I had boxes on my Excel spreadsheet. One was a fan and one was a heater box. And that allowed me to send triggers to my temperature chamber to turn on a heater or a fan. And so what I could do is I could be at the airport on my iPad, I could bring up that Excel spreadsheet, and I could change the fan box or I could change the heater box to on or off. That information is written into the Excel spreadsheet, which once again is synced to the cloud by Dropbox. And then once again, my computer running in the office is going to get that new Excel, updated Excel spreadsheet, see those settings, my program would read those settings in, and send a trigger out to turn on or off the fan or turn on or off the heater. Now, in my example, it was just controlling a temperature chamber type setup, but the idea is you could use it to change settings or ranges on a test system uh, or anything like that. So once again, this is just meant to be an example of how we could use the cloud to set up an easy uh, test report that can be accessed from almost anywhere. Okay. So I'm going to conclude uh, the presentation right now. Uh, thanks for listening.